Hi guys and welcome to today's video. I hope you're having a great day. I for sure am. Why? Because HitFilm 4 Express just came out a few days ago and it has all the features I really needed from HitFilm 3 Express that were in HitFilm 3 Pro that weren't in HitFilm 3 Express. Yeah, they all came out. So today I'm going to show you guys pretty much the basics of using HitFilm 4 Express. Uh, so yeah, let's just roll the intro. Okay, so to begin using your project, you've downloaded it, you've uh, activated it and everything, and you're ready to go. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to see all of this stuff. This heads up, which is just a tutorial. The first thing you're going to do is click the new. But you'll go into this project tab. So you have four tabs, and home is just like the news and stuff. You don't really ever need to use this. Project is just your project settings. Edit is where you'll be pretty much all the time. And export is where you go to finally export it. So in the project settings, 1080p, 720p, Instagram, Vine, a custom uh, file size. So 1080p is obviously full HD. This is America. This is uh, Europe. And this is uh, for film. Um, so I'm just going to choose 29.97, blah, blah, blah. Leave this all the same. You you just leave it all the same and click start editing everything is great so you won't actually have something that looks like this I think you'll have something that looks like this when you first start you'll have the editing uh, workspace which looks like this so if you want to change your workspace and you don't like the way it looks then pretty much just go workspace and you can change it here so I'm just gonna quickly go through an outline of what all of these does this is the timeline which is where you put all your clips together and make your final product this over here, this box here, is your viewer, and this is what your final product looks like. You can also switch to layer, which when you're in a composite shot, which I'll get to later, you can view just a certain layer rather than the whole thing combined. Uh, you've also got, in this uh, particular setup here, you've got the media, which is the videos you want to put in, create your final one, your effects, which there are a lot of them, uh, controls, so controls for the effects and for your video and for scale and movement and stuff, history, so... If you said undo and you've moved something, you can use your history here. And text, which is how you edit your text. And uh, yeah, this is all really nifty. So to start off, also you've got this trimmer, which I'll get to later. So to start off, pretty much, you can just drag your media into this box, or alternatively, you can click import. And when you click import, uh, you're just going to select your clips and uh, press open and import them. And as you see here, I've got a bunch of stock footage that I got off YouTube. Um, it's really nothing special. This is just time lapse. This is another time lapse. This is some music from soundscrate.com. Awesome website. Link in the description. And this is just uh, a piece of aerial stock footage. Um, it's really very simple. So the trimmer here shows you your original clip that you imported. So we can play this piece of stock footage back. And uh, this is how we trim it before we move into the timeline. So, as we can see here, say we don't want the whole clip, we only just really want it when it comes over here. So, select this to create an in point, or press I on your keyboard, and that will do the same thing. And say we want it to go into this building here, and then out point. So that, and you can also press O, so I and O, to create in and out points, which is handy because they're right next to each other on the keyboard. But, uh, pretty much, this is... Instead of dragging the whole thing into your timeline, you're only going to drag this in, which saves you a lot of work uh, in the editor because, in my opinion, HitFilm's editor is not the most fluid of them all. So once you've done that, just press this Insert Clip button. Don't just drag it in because I think it'll drag the whole thing in. Just press the Insert Clip button. And it may say, Editor Sequence Settings Differ, blah 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 blah. It pretty much means the clip you've got in the timeline is different to the one you're adding. I'm going to click Yes that's easier. Oh no, I'm going to click here. Okay, sorry about that kerfuffle guys. So you've got your clip here in your timeline. You've probably noticed left is for going to the past and this is going to the future. And uh, you can see the time markings here. If you want to zoom into your timeline, just use the timeline scale button. And you can zoom right into frames, which is really nice for visual effects. Um, you've also got a quick export button here. And this is a, a track style uh, timeline, so pretty much you have tracks of video on the top and tracks of audio on the bottom, which we'll get to later. So 
So I'm going to insert next clip. I'm just going to drag this one straight in. And uh, see it pretty nice. And I'm also going to drag this one straight after it. So we've got some pretty nifty stuff going on here. And we notice that because this is 720p and 1080p, your footage should all, should all be the same, but it crops in slightly to these. Press space to play back your, your video. I'm just going to skip over to here. And you can see it straight away just cuts from one to the next, and from this one all the way over to the next one, just like that. So there's some things we want to go through here. It seems pretty boring at the moment, not only because it's actually boring, but let's just add some music. So I've got this music off soundscrate.com. It's a great website. Again, the link is in the description. And uh, we can just shorten this by dragging on the ends. And as we play back, it plays back nice and smooth music. And you can see that in the meters here, it shows you the audio meters. Um, and when it goes over here in red, it means it clips the audio and it loses the information from the audio. Uh, so yeah, we're in a good range at the moment. Very nice. Sounds much better now. Sorry about that. And we've noticed that we've actually got some audio here, but it's just blank audio. It's actually nothing special. So I want to get rid of that. And as you notice, if I drag the audio in, I just dragged it on a separate track because there was already audio right here. So if we right click on this clip and select unlink, it'll unlink the video with the audio. So I just click on the audio and press delete, and we can drag this over here. So another thing I want to go through is not only can you layer audio tracks together, you can layer video, video tracks together. And you can layer infinite video tracks together, all on top of each other. So, um, because we've got these clips together, because the uh, this time lapse is on the top, it doesn't show the one below, as we can see. However, we can do all sorts of controls, uh, so going from our media to our controls tab, to change that. So if we go just to our transform, say, we can change the scale, we can move it around, we can rotate it, and uh, now we've already got it positioned, so say, say this was like a picture-in-picture picture sort of thing, like in the corner sort of style. Then we've got this, which looks really nice. We've also got blend mode, so if you go into clip properties, in the editor you've got your blend mode right here, and you can set it to add color. I'm not going to go through these, you can google them, uh, but just to show you guys, add, um, sort of adds them together, and you can set the opacity, don't know why it's in the transform, but I suppose here film just felt like doing it that way. So this is the basics of editing, really. Um, there's also, you can use the hand tool just to uh, move around, say if you're zoomed in, and you can move around like so with the hand tool, and obviously move clips around, trim them. Um, there's obviously the, uh, the slice tool, which you can use to slice clips, and then using this tool, drag the, the another clip over there, which is pretty cool, really nifty. Now we're going to delve into effects, which is one of the areas where hit film shines. So if I just undo all of those dodgy things, we can start to apply some effects. So on this time lapse here, we're just going to apply a very basic effect. So go into our effects tab and in color correction, or you can search it up, I'm just going to apply brightness and contrast. And uh, simply just drag it straight onto the video clip. Sometimes they take a while to actually apply. And then if you notice in our controls, down in the effects tab, we've got an effect, which is brightness and contrast. Really simple. Affects the brightness. Ouch, that hurt my eyes. And the contrast of your clip. So just, if you want to delete it, select the effect, delete it. Something that I added in hit from 4 Express was curves. Now I've been waiting for this for ages because I am tired and tired of levels histogram. Um, but you probably don't even know what that is if you're watching this video. Uh, for example, there are also effects such as uh, lightning and electricity. I don't know whether... Sorry about that kerfuffle there, guys. Uh, actually, the program quit on me. So make sure you save everything uh, very constantly because this program is prone to quitting. But yeah, as I was saying, lightning and electricity effects, all sorts of things. There's like fire effects, 3D effects, it's amazing what you can do. Um, there are even presets. So if we go down here to our presets, 
Can I go to 3D effects and quick 3D? There are a whole ton of different things, just phases, you know, um, large flame explosions, all these things, the star travel, which I found really inventive because that's actually a rain effect. But anyways, that's not really the point. They've also got some film looks, for example, uh, burnt stock, um, which will look really cool. It adds a ton of effects, which makes it look like burn, burnt film stock. And uh, you can add your own uh, presets into these film looks or whatever you want. And you can even create your own followers with their own presets, although we'll get to that. Maybe in another video. But yes, um, as we can see, some effects actually have this thing called layer only on them. And when we try and drag these effects onto our videos, we see that we can't do anything. The reason for this is that we need to drag it onto a layer only. And to create layers, we need to make a composite shot. This is the beauty of HitFilm, the composite shot. So create a composite shot. I'm going to save my project real quick. If you remember that. And in this composite shot here, uh, one thing um, we can see here is a layer. And that's our normal video, but we can even add layers, which is pretty cool. So, for example, I'm just going to now, well now we can drag the Auto Light Flares tool onto our video. And pretty much what it'll do is it's a new effect in HitFilm 4 um, Express, and it will add automatically add flares. Um, depending on the brighter parts of the image and I'm just going to jack this up to 100 because I feel like it and it looks way cooler and more realistic when we do that. That's a composite shot. What else can you do in composite shots? You can add text. So let's just press to uh, create new text and new layers. Just press the new layer button and we see you've got a whole thing. The point is just a layer that holds no visual data but just information about position and things. And the text is what we're going to attack. add now. So we, we can always change the width and height of this later. We'll press OK, and uh, we can see we've got our nice text here. Now, in our text, um, we can go all the way to our text tab, and we can edit the text. Also, we can go down to our text tool here and type in whatever we want. For example, uh, my name is Shiny, Shiny Films. And, uh, we can make this bigger just by dragging on it like so and that's quite big so I won't make it that big and we can drag on this little corner to change the size here and we can move it wherever we please so that's uh, how we add text and we can add the great thing about having new layers like this is that we can add all, all sorts of effects um, to this one layer. I don't really know what I'm going to apply to this layer at the moment or what I could apply to this layer at the moment but the options are endless uh, with doing it this way. The only downside is you have to do it in a composite shot rather than in the uh, actual editor. And one thing I just thought I'd mention at the end of this video is the rate stretch tool which is something they added in HitFilm 4 Express that I've been waiting for for a long time and I bet a lot of people have. It's like uh, other programs, rate stretch tools, it's how you change time. They used to have this funny speed effect and they still have it, don't know why. But now they have a rate stretch tool which is much much better and it's much easier to use and you can make time lapses like this even faster, which is really cool. And by the way, use the a full stop key to go forward a frame and the comma key to go back a frame. Yeah. And just a quick run over of the export settings in HitFilm. Uh, for, you can export to YouTube a QuickTime file, an MP4 file, or just a plain old image sequence. So if you want to upload straight to YouTube, <clears throat> select the timeline you want to work from, which is the editor, or your composite shot. Uh, export areas, the content area, the work area, uh, or the entire timeline, the work areas, the little bars you can choose. But mostly it's just stick to content area. You've got to add your YouTube account and uh, link them, and you can change your video properties here. If you go into QuickTime, we've got the same settings here, and we can export the video and the audio. We can change the codec. So uncompressed is going to be really hard on your computer. No one's going to watch it uncompressed. It's every frame as it is. So you've got to use another codec. AVCHD H264 is the most commonly used codec, 
but you've got to use more than 2 megabits per second and this is where everyone sort of falls so you've got to do at least 14 so I wouldn't use AVC or H.264 I would go to ProRes if you're using um, QuickTime I think it's called DNX HD on Windows or something you've got 422, 4444 and you can just go regular photo JPEG You've also got MP4, which is what I use all the time. Uh, you've got uh, your width height frame rate, which is not available here because you have to change it to something like. You're going to set your level to something like higher and change your bit rate uh, up because then it will have less compression. Uh, generally, I just say the encoding to a constant bit rate of around 50 megabits per second. That works great for me. My computer can play it back normally. And that's what I do most of the time. Image sequence, you can just export an image sequence uh, like that. Pretty simple. Yeah, that's how you export in HitFilm for Express. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, comment, etc., whatever. Um, I will see you guys in the next video.